Thanks for coming out. Uh, first of all, how many people saw this talk last year? Show of hands. Okay, these are the people you have to watch out for because they're going to try to cheat. All right? They, they know the answers to like half the stuff in this talk. So if you're sitting next to one of them, yeah, keep them, keep them in control, please. All right. Uh, this is Death by a Thousand Cuts. Before I get into my talk, let me, uh, let me talk about the serious subject that I have for this year. Uh, there is a lot of really bad stuff going on in this world. Uh, we're sitting in a lap of luxury, enjoying wonderful things like, uh, you know, food and uh, water and uh, air conditioning and stuff like that. Uh, that's not how 90% of the world is. Uh, right now, the associates program that I have running is supporting stuff that's going on in northern Uganda. Uh, tens of thousands of children are disappearing. They're getting pulled into uh, militia service. Uh, they're basically becoming soldiers against their will. Their families have uh, no choice in the issue because they risk death if they, you know, get in the middle of this. So what I'm doing is I'm supporting uh, various organizations in northern Uganda. Uh, this is Invisible Children, one of the websites that I'm uh, helping out. If you go to my website and click through any of the Amazon links, uh, all of the associates proceeds go to help out this organization, try to take care of some of that stuff that's going on a little bit at a time. So uh, that's that. First of all, let me introduce, introduce myself. Here is my, uh, here's my resume. The, uh, the whole like PhD thing really bugs me. So I decided I'd get a little bit creative with my job description. Here it is. Uh, first one's uh, sort of obvious to those of you that know me. I am a Christian. Uh, I am also a hacker. That is my trade. That's my profession. That's what I do for a living. I am a pirate by blood. I'm a direct descendant of Sir Henry Morgan. Uh, most of you may know him as Captain Morgan. He Arr. Arr. Yeah, he had nothing to do with the rum. Uh, that was like a side business. He didn't have anything to do with Jamaica either. That was a big mistake. He wasn't supposed to attack Jamaica, but there was this communications problem. And, you know, the war ended and he didn't know, so he sacked Jamaica. And, you know, so it really wasn't his fault. It was really overrated. Uh, so pirate by blood, yeah, it wasn't his fault really. Uh, I'm also a ninja in training. I'm taking a Bujinkan Budo Taijutsu, which is the unarmed fighting method of the ninja. It's hot. So in April 2009, I plan on getting my black belt. Uh, at that point, I will be able to put pirate, hacker, ninja, and penetration specialist on my business card. <laughs> Right, so I'm thinking PhD is pretty lame at that point. All right, what this is about, this is, this is the one hour version of this talk, so we're really gonna be flying. Uh, this book, I don't know how many of you read it, uh, Stealing the Network, How to Own an Identity, was uh, basically centered around this character named Nuth, who was just a really bad man, all right? Uh, he was so incredibly paranoid that what he did is he melted down all of his hard drives, melted down all of his USB devices, sanded down all of his CD-ROMs with a belt sander, Till there was nothing left but a clear stack of discs and a big bucket of really sparkly little flakes. And that was the evidence that he left behind. I'm like, dude, that guy's hardcore. All right, so I'm reading these books. I'm like, man, whoever has to clean up this mess is screwed. So then Singers calls me and they said, uh, we'd love for you to write in the next book. I'm like, oh, that would so rock. So I'm like all excited. I get on the mailing list. They're like, uh, guess what? You got to catch this guy. I was like, you're kidding me, right? They're like, no, we want you to write the cop that's actually going to do the forensics gig at, like, Newth's place. He has, like, copper mesh in the wall, and, uh, you know, he melted all his hard drives and sanded his CD-ROMs. And so write about a cop that's going to bust him. Can we do that? I'm like, sure, okay. That's what this talk is about. The talk is about catching somebody like this who is just untraceable. He's incredibly paranoid and it's about finding evidence and what I learned in the process of researching this. Okay. Now, one of the things that I want to bring up here is I found a lot of problems with the way forensics works, you know, the process of forensics. And that's also what this talk is about. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Now, let me see if you're awake. See if you can find the evidence. Look carefully. It's lower. Yes, the iPod. Thank you. Yeah, if you can't find it, I know what you're looking at. All right, iPods. I'm going to fly through this, but iPods hold all sorts of evidence. There's lots of things that you can do. 
uh, to get evidence off of an iPod. But one of the things that sucks about being a good guy is that you've got to be really careful about how you handle these things. For example, you walk into a crime scene, you see an iPod sitting on a table, what's the first thing you do? Just call it out. I heard photograph it. Yeah, absolutely. Photograph the crime scene. That's the first thing. If you can't take pictures, take a drawing. What's next? Put it, put it in a bag, which involves picking it up. All right? When you pick it up, the C4 charge underneath goes off and blows your face off. Because that's just the what Nuth would do. All right. But yeah, you've got to pick it up. Okay, what's next? What do you do with this little iPod? Chain of custody. Wow, somebody's done this before. It's a good idea. How about like turning it on, flipping through the menus, going to the about screen, getting the, oh, no, absolutely not. Yes, you do not want to do that. So one of the things that you want to do is not turn it on and flip through it. You might actually want to, you know, image the hard drive. Question is, where are you going to do that? What should your platform be? If the iPod's HFS Plus formatted, what OS do you use? OS X. You're stuck with it. Now, there's probably a Linux geek in the audience that's going to call me on this, like, kernel version, blah, 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 HFS plus, read, write. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you might be right, but I have more of a life than to keep up on kernel versions, so <laughs> just use the Mac. So use the HFS plus. You got your Mac, good platform. We're ready to go. Let's start imaging. So we hook it up to the Mac and plug it in, right? Why not? What do you got to do? Sure, you got to write block it. It's a USB 2.0, so you buy a USB 2.0 write blocker, right? Anybody? What's that? There's a demon that runs. Smart man. All right. Yes. You plug the iPod in, and iTunes grabs this thing and goes, ooh, look, an iPod. I can do all sorts of unspeakable things to its hard drive. Watch this. And you're like, holy crap, there goes my evidence, right? Well. You don't want to do that because there's this really annoying demon that runs called the disk arbitration demon. All right? And OS X is so incredibly friendly that if you kill the disk arbitration demon and then plug the iPod in, guess what happens? The demon restarts. And then iPod goes, whoo, look, an iPod. I can do all sorts of unspeakable things. All right? So this clever trick works really well. You change mode 000, the disk arbitration D, so the freaking thing won't run and it doesn't run. See, as an investigator, you've got to go through all of this crap, and it's really sort of impossible being a good guy, but I'm really going to pick on the process of being a good guy because sometimes overlooking the obvious happens. Do you have a question? Yeah, moving it out of the directory that it's in will work. Um, yanking permissions off of it. I mean, there's all sorts of things that uh, the point is you have to consider before you just start mucking around with these things. It ain't easy being a good guy. Uh, you can also turn this thing into a flat disk drive. This is a third generation iPod. Uh, basically what you do is you power it off, hold down forward, backward, center, select, release, and uh, you're done. That's all at the same time. I think it requires like eight fingers. <laughs> Maybe another appendage. All right. You do all that, reboot this thing, voila, it's USB disk mode. Now it's a USB disk and it's not an iPod. All right, so you get the point. It's hard being a bad guy. Now. What other things can you do with an iPod? You can boot from them. That really sucks for good guys. So what's on these iPods that you can boot off of? Well, there's porn. There's uh, music, videos. There's porn. <laughs> there's calendars and notes and porn. All right, well, we're not going to. We're not going to deal with the porn on stage. I'm sorry. There's another talk for that, but it's not mine. All right. What about metadata? Now, I'm not going to beat a dead horse with metadata. We all know what metadata is. It's that data that's meta, and it you know, <laughs> hangs out in files and stuff. All right. So there's stuff inside the files, metadata. What's wrong with the metadata in this particular example? What's curious? It's got some interesting comments that are written in hex. So an agent takes one look at this and goes, ooh, covert channel, right? And runs an analysis program that takes like three and a half years to figure out where the covert channel is. And then at the end of three and a half years, he comes back and he goes, well, I guess it was just garbage. 
to find anything. It's called a smoke screen. Really sucks being a good guy sometimes. All right. Speaking of music, say you have something that looks like this, and this is just a like iTunes directory listing. Uh, it's really generic. I, I don't know whose iTunes library it is, and some lamer that listens to Debbie Gibson. Um, but what's wrong with this? Anything besides the fact that it's Debbie Gibson? Let's listen to it. Listen to this soulful sound. Oh yeah. Can you hear it yet? There it was. Did you hear it? What was it? Was it right? How many people caught it? You can raise your hands higher. It's okay. Yeah, you know Debbie Gibson, but you caught it. There was something there that wasn't right. What was it? There's a hex dump. What's in there? Secret data. Ooh. All right, now we've heard of steganography, right? And everybody, you know, a lot of people have talked about steganography. I don't know if it's being used or not. I don't know if people are actually using this. But I will say one thing. A good guy gets a case. He finds a hard drive. He finds stego tools on the hard drive. He makes an assumption and says, there's probably stego on this machine. Right? It's a safe assumption. But say he doesn't find the tools to create steg. Is there stego? Maybe. Maybe not. Odds are he's going to go for the low-hanging fruit. But the simple fact of the matter is you don't need stego programs to hide stuff in things like mp3 files. You got an iPod full of music. If an investigator doesn't listen to the music or start looking closer, he might miss something incredibly obvious like this. A secret message typed in a hex editor into an mp3 that causes a quarter of a second glitch in the music. Okay? Secret data. Low tech stego. All right, what about this? Can you tell me what's wrong with this? other than the fact that it's Britney Spears. Yes, it's spelled wrong. Who knew that? Britney Spears fan, right there. Yeah, baby. All right. Now, the point is, misspelling is not necessarily an obvious thing for a technical person. All right. I, maybe I'm wrong. But there's other sexy things up there like file sizes and access times, Mac times, right? I got all this stuff. It's an MP3 file. What's the codec and blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, and it's spelled wrong. Okay, the point is good guys sometimes get so wrapped up in the technology that they miss the obvious. So it's misspelled. Why is this misspelled? How did it happen? What does it mean that this is misspelled? Any ideas? It was modified by a human. Think it used the CDDB? No. Maybe. Maybe the CDDB's misspelled. Is an investigator going to check the CDDB to see if it's misspelled? Should they? Depends on the profile of the case. Okay, but it's another point. It's really tough for the good guys sometimes. All right, let's look at this one. What's wrong with this? Hmm. I'm impressed. The title's wrong? What do you mean the title's wrong? It is different than the previous screen. I'll give you that. Anything else? Well, yeah, specifically the title is supposed to be I'm a Slave for You, right? It's truncated. The, the song actually was on the album Britney from 2001. Uh, it was later released on Greatest Hits, my prerogative. Uh, <laughs> It was actually a bonus track on that CD, and, and actually that CD came out in 2004, Britney came out in 2001. Um, besides that, there was no uh, Me Against the Music album ever. Um, not that I know these things. I'm just taking a guess. All right. But yeah, it's all wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So these are some very subtle flags that a good guy might pick up on. All right, what's wrong with this? 
No caps. Did it come from the CDDB? Probably not. Okay. Good. Lower case. All right. You've also got things like AEC files. AEC files can have embedded information like the email address that it's registered to. There's metadata everywhere that can stump a good guy. All right. Now, let's talk for a second about images. Take a look at these images. <laughs> Just some random guy. Bow to my firewall. All right. Can you guys see a difference? Is there a difference? Let's take another view. Is there a difference? Let's enlarge it. What's the difference? What's the secret message? You see it? Ready? Shmoo rocks the house. <laughs> All right. How's this for low tech stego? No tools to create it typed right into the JPEG in alternating characters makes no difference in the resulting image that you can see. Required no tools. Granted, it was plain text and it wasn't encrypted, but there's no tools on the machine for the good guys to key on to go, there's probably stego there's, that we're dealing with. There's no changes in the image to make it look like there's stego. Okay, so even in the absence of tools, we could have steganography. All right, what about video? Let me play a video clip. I, 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 hot. <gasps> bam! Bam! There's all these vulnerabilities. Bam! <gasps> bam! Wee! Wee! Oh, Colonel! Wee! Hot. Wee! Hot. <gasps> oh my god, you can't do that anymore! Bruce, you rock, dude. I just wish I had half that energy, man. You get some caffeine in me, I'm not even going to look close to that. All right, so you saw the video, right? Let's see it again. I, 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 hot. <gasps> oh, bam! Bam! There's all these vulnerabilities. Bam! <gasps> oh, bam! Wee! Wee! Oh, Colonel! Wee! Hot. Wee! Hot. <gasps> oh, my God, you can't do that anymore. Did you see the difference? Did you catch it? You lie. What's the secret message? Oh, that's the first word, bam. Second word is bam. So it's bam, bam, hot, hot, bam. And I quote. <laughs> right? So steganography without any tools making almost zero difference in the resulting file. The only thing that it hoses is the actual hash. Right? Your hash is blown. But if you don't have the original, you can't compare hashes to go, hey, my hash is blown. All right? What about this? Let's look at a listing from an iPod. See anything interesting? There you go. Nopix.img, a persisted encrypted home directory for Nopix sitting on an iPod. What does this mean? Somebody's using Nopix. They're using this as a device to load a persistent encrypted home directory off of this device. Okay, I can tell you it's AES 128-bit encrypted. Good luck cracking that. What does it say about the user? Sophisticated, absolutely. Can you crack the crypto? Probably not. But you can make a determination that this iPod is not like a normal iPod. You can make an instant determination this guy knows what he's doing. Okay? So from an investigator standpoint, this is a good trigger. There's other stuff on iPods like calendars, uh, contact information, all this stuff. Now the reason, the reason I talk about this is that there are some possibilities for the good guys to actually overcome some of this stuff. But, for, like, for example, the thing with the hashes, right? If you've got an MP3 file that has a flag, like it's got lowercase or it's got a misspelling or something like that, and you go on a peer-to-peer -peer network and you find that same file with the same misspelling and you hash it, compare the hashes, and you go, they match. He got this off a file sharing service. I don't have to worry about Stego, right? Sounds logical. Multiply that times how many thousands of MP3 files do you have personally right? Combined with the fact that there's these things called procedures, right? How many people in here do forensics investigations? Okay, a few people. How many of you are allowed to go arbitrarily onto peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks and download anything? You lie. 
All right. Well, it's not very common, so that's the fact. The good guys are up against some serious, some serious issues that can be overcome. But all right, let's play a little game. This is the kitchen counter of three 19-year-old guys that are sharing an apartment. All right. Now, play investigator for a second and tell me what doesn't fit. Yeah, the choice of soda is arguably just incredibly lame. I don't know. Who would drink crap like, you know, diet soda? It's like just drinking water. Oh, water. High fiber cereal. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's, that's a, what about the, uh, anything else? The wheat thins. What kind of wheat thins? Low sodium. All right, now what's the point of low sodium wheat thins? <laughs> right? For, for a 19 year old, right? There's like three food groups, right? There's beer, right? There's sweets and there's salties, right? That's like the three food groups. Like wheat thins are none of those without the salt. All right, so speaking of the wheat thins, what's wrong with these wheat thins? Anything? Where's the evidence? There's evidence on this kitchen counter, all right? All right, hold on, wait for it. Here it comes, you ready? Boop. <laughs> All right, now, a 19-year-old Uber hacker hiding SD cards under his low-sodium wheat thins is a bit of a stretch. Okay, all right. But the simple fact is, the way investigations work is there's somebody that knocks your door down, or knocks politely, as the, whatever the case may be, comes into your house, there's a team that comes in that handles the scene, right? They handle the scene, they grab the evidence, they take photos, they go through the procedures, they take the evidence back, probably to a lab, depending on the size of the organization, somebody will probably image, check in, and image the data, right? Figure out, you know, get all this stuff into flat files. Depending on the size of the shop, that data might go in the form of files to an investigator who actually runs the investigation, right? So say the guy that came into the house, you know, with his Kevlar and his Darth Vader helmet, you know, and his MP5 PDW, right, doesn't look at the counter and see anything interesting and go, man, they're freaking pigs, and leaves, right? Now, this is a silly example, but he didn't move the cracker, right? He didn't think to move the cracker. He didn't stop to think low-sodium wheat thins don't fit in. So because he didn't move the cracker, he left a gig of data behind. You can store a little bit in a gig. All right. Let's play investigator again. This is an image taken from a digital camera. OK, all you have is this image. That's it. Nothing else on the card. One picture. That's your evidence. It's a file. One file, one image, solve the case. Tell me where this picture was taken. Yeah, it looks like an office. You could zoom in on the post-it notes. That's a good idea. That's not what I'm looking for, though. The letterhead, that's a really good idea. The time. What about the time? What's the time stamp? Four in the morning. It's light outside. What does that tell you? Well, it could tell you a couple things. For one, it could tell you that the time on the camera is set wrong, right? Now, this is an image, right? You got this as a file. Tell me what the time stamp is on the camera. What's the time set to on the camera if you have this file? Can you tell? No. You've got to have the camera, right? So with the camera separated from the image, you have no way to validate if the timestamp was right. OK? But let's, just, let's say the timestamp is right. It's Pacific Daylight Time. That's where we got this, right? What does that mean about where this picture was taken? He's living on the West Coast, right? Four in the morning. It's daylight. What? Like Alaska, OK? 4 a.m., good. We also mentioned the letterhead, right? So we take the image and we do 
a hyper zoom just like they do on TV, on like CSI, pull the image out, make it look super grainy, get it reflected off of somebody's sunglasses across the street, right? <laughs> Comes out looking just like that. You're like, sweet, that says NOC. All right, forget the fact that you could read it right from the regular image, but you know, you gotta play this up a little bit. NOC, what do you do with something like NOC if you don't know what it is? Google, anybody know anything about Google? I do. NOC is the Nigerian oil company. Anybody know where Nigeria is? Africa, yeah. <laughs> Heard that. Okay. What's the time difference, anyone? From here. How many hours ahead? Close. Ten. Ten hours ahead. All right. So, interesting things like that. Here's two pictures. Tell me what's different. There's no stego. Yep. What about the timestamps? They're different. What about the camera type? Different. Okay, this is EXIF stuff. It's hidden inside the EXIF headers. If an investigator doesn't look at those headers because, wow, that's all played out talking about metadata, they might miss the fact that this picture on the right was modded with Photoshop. All right? So, what does an agent who's worth their salt do with a case that's high priority? Well, here's some of the things. First of all, they look at the pictures. They don't just look at them as data. They look at them and they try to figure out, well, what's interesting about them? What's different? Um, you know, other stuff like that. Boring. All right. Uh, Timestamps, covert channels. Thumbnail inconsistencies. Does the thumbnail in the image actually match the image itself? What if it doesn't? What does that mean? Okay. Yes. All right, let's play a game. Where's the evidence? This is your crime scene. It's not the laptop. It's not the thumb drive. The telephone. All right? There's your phone. There's your evidence. Now, say you took the laptop and you took the thumb drive, and then you realize you need to check the call records. So somebody gives you the call records. What did you leave behind if you left the phone behind? Redial information, right? Good. Could include all sorts of stuff. Mailbox information, pin codes, access codes. What else? Extended dial digits, park settings, in-dial forwarding. Is that stuff stored on the switch where you got your call logs? Sure. Is it included in the report that you get printed that lists the calls? No, it's not. So the phone is evidence. Ear wax on the hand. I'm not into that, but <laughs> works for some people. It's, it's just too salty. I lick it off and it ugh. makes me thirsty. What's this thing? What is this thing? Yeah, it's a very sexy IP phone. All right. Now, this is just a bit of a sidebar, um, but hypothetically speaking, if a certain organization, say it was a lodging sort of institution, had a IP telephone, this is all hypothetical, had an IP telephone inside the room, um, would it be a good idea to actually have the IP phone network connected to, say, things like, I don't know, customer records? Yes or no? That would be a pretty horrible idea. I don't think anybody would ever do that. That just wouldn't be smart. And besides, casinos have really good security. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> cell phones. Let's talk about. Uh, let's not talk about cell phones. They're boring. Uh, how about printers? Printers have lots of evidence. So you've got a printer as evidence. Right? So you go up to the printer and uh, you go into the information menu and you print the event log and there's your event log. Are you an Uber agent? Uh, no. Why? You just did something to the evidence, right? Is printing a print log an event? It's like a catch-22, right? Are you able to take 
you know, like the cartridge and the internals out of the printer and send it to the basement of NSA and have them do their like CSI magic on it to like lift the toner off and print out the last thing that was printed? No, because you just printed something over it, right? So what can you do? Well, you can do everything from the LCD panel without affecting any of the evidence. There's your event log, one painful line at a time. <laughs> it's easy to read too. So not only do you have to like jot it all down, right? But you got to go back and translate it and figure out what all the events were and the time codes and all that crap. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times, it ain't easy being a good guy. Uh, there's these uh, web interfaces on some printers. Some cases you can go in through that. If you can't find your printer's web interface, uh, you could go onto Google and actually type in, you know, the search for your web interface and uh, find it out there on the web, open like this one. Not that I've ever done anything like that before. Uh, this is just a Photoshop that's meant to look like a real printer that was found on the web that was wide open that cached all their print jobs, but uh, surprisingly, it's nothing like that at all. <laughs> fax machine, same way. Go through the fax machines. You can look at the LCD menu. You can get all the information off the LCD menu without printing anything. It's really pretty straightforward. All right. Faxes and multifunction. So, Things like uh, Uber agents are not going to go into printers that are you know, on site at a scene of a crime and just start printing stuff out. They're just not going to do it. Network devices. We're not going to talk too much about network devices, but there's lots of data in those peripheral devices that get left behind, as you know. Things like wireless devices. Most of the time, investigators are going to grab those, okay, but sometimes they might get overlooked. Could cause a problem. Let's play a game. Where's the evidence? All right, well, let me label some of these for you. All right. Now, where's the evidence? Very nice. Yes, those are breath strips, and this is a USB watch. There you go. USB data on it. All right. Did you cut the guy's arm off and get his watch? Probably should have. All right. Where's the evidence? All right, well, let's do this again. These are breath strips. This is a USB watch. Where's the evidence? Let's try it again. It's not the ring. Where's the evidence? It's not in his hand. Oh, come on. You guys are terrible investigators. Oh, wait, this is a hacker conference. All right, well, here's the evidence. So the moral of that story is cut his arm off and both thumbs. <laughs> Heard this called the, the phone book uh, interrogation technique. It's just taken to the next level. All right, where's the evidence? Not the wallet. Not the blockbuster card. All of it. Crayons. That's very good. No. Oh, I heard it. Receipts. Ready? Now, did you go into the junk drawer in the kitchen, rifle through it? All those bajillions of pens and all that crap that's in the drawer. As an investigator, if you didn't, what did you leave behind? Maybe nothing. Maybe everything. All right, also based on this drawer, what other evidence should you expect to find in the house? <laughs> Kids, that's a good observation. There's an iPod charger. So if you don't have an iPod as part of your stuff, you missed something. There's no reason to have an iPod charger unless you have an iPod, unless you're a hacker. He does? I thought I blurred that out. Okay, they're a bunch of hackers. It's not the yo-yo either. You guys know I have mad yo-yo skills, right? All right, where's the evidence? 
It's not the cell phone. <laughs> USB dog toy. It's not a play thing with buttons on it. It's a child's computer. Give the kid a break. It's a computer, and that's not it. Let's try it again. Uh-huh. What'd you say? Yeah. Little duck even stuck the tail feathers up for you and everything. It was like, here's the evidence. <laughs> Missed it. That's right. Where's the evidence? It's not USB Clorox. <laughs> you know what happens if you pass electrical cur current through bleach? <laughs> uh, don't answer that. <laughs> it's not a USB skill saw. It's not USB toilet paper. That would just be a mess. The only item that doesn't have dust on it. Very good. Ready? Believe it or not, it's true. Let's do it again. Ready? Here's your crime scene. Where's the evidence? That's not a knife. It's a dagger. Pirates have daggers. Arr. The, the ball thing? The medieval torture toy? No. I heard it. I heard it. Very nice. Okay, now this is the part of the talk where I do a little bit of advertising. So I call up thinkgeek.com and I'm like, man, you guys rock. You have like the coolest stuff. I'm like, I'm doing this talk. My name's Johnny Long, penetration specialist. She's like, who? suck <laughs> like I'm really big at like the hacker conferences like DEF CON she's like what I'm like you really suck I'm like okay all right forget all that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do this talk about like cool stuff and you know I'm trying to get all these pictures and like thousands of people are gonna see it and so you send me stuff and I'll take pictures of it and I'll send it back to you and I'll plug thinkgeek.com because you guys su don't suck <laughs> so she's like oh okay well, let me forward you to click Hello? Hello? So I call her back. Well, needless to say, they never called me back. So if you're going to buy any of this stuff, for God's sakes, don't go to thinkgeek.com. <laughs> I'm not so bent about they didn't know me. You know, it's just me. But they didn't know DEF CON. Oh. And they want us to think geek. Ugh. Oh. All right, so let's do this again. Where's the evidence? Who, what? Oh, somebody's sharp. Digital photo frame. It's got storage, it's USB. All right, where's the evidence? A Microsoft coaster, isn't that funny? USB screwdriver, that would be kind of hot, actually. See the, can you read the name on the business card? Because that's suspicious. Kevin Mitnick's business card. <laughs> yes, very good. Here you go. USB Swiss Army knife. All right, ready? Where's the evidence? Now, wait a minute. What exactly would you do with the USB banana? <laughs> nah, nah, I don't want it. Uh, la, 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 la. I'm sorry I asked that question. Yeah, I, ooh, ooh. I'm hearing all sorts of interface jokes. This just isn't good. <laughs> all right, where's the evidence? Come on, you're losing focus now. No? The app. <laughs> There's no evidence. The bowl of fruit people. There's no evidence. Just kidding. All right. Where's the evidence? It was really just a bowl of fruit, I swear. It's not the laptops. 
It's not the especially suspicious laptop with the unclassified sticker on it. Which the sticker itself is not unclassified, it's just a sticker. Very nice. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> USB table. Boink. All right, ready? Where's the evidence? Excellent. <laughs> USB soy sauce. See, I can see you guys as, as investigators, right? You're like going to the place, you got like this big pile of like, I don't know, girls underwear or something. What are you, what are you, what are you doing with all, it's digital evidence, it's USB underpants. I swear. Very nice. Anybody read Bruce Sterling's The Zenith Angle? Anyone? Show if, go up strong. I'm sorry. Um, you should come to the Hacking Hollywood talk. We'll talk more about that book and some movies and stuff. I heard it said, here it comes. Ready? All right, so when the black Kevlar clad MP5 PDW wheeling, wielding gorilla comes into the house, sees the kitchen counter, sees the sushi, swallows it all in one gulp, and walks away, you've got a problem. He probably won't even know till he passes it. Where's the evidence? Pikachu, even pronounced correctly. That's awesome. No, it's not it. It's not the police car. It's not the train. It's not the Pikachu. It's not the Pikachu. It's not the Pikachu. <laughs> Somebody say Bulbasaur? Wow. <laughs> Where is the Pokemon fan? <laughs> Excellent. You have kids? That's, no? All right. You know, sometimes I don't even have to do a talk. I can just be up here and let you guys crack all the jokes. All right. Ready? <laughs> yes, it's true. Where's the evidence? Nope, not the Pokemon. Ready? Yep. No, don't go to Think Geek. It is forbidden. E-reader cards. Game Boy E-reader. Each card holds 2.6K and they're rewritable. Ooh, ouch. All right, let's go back to the kitchen. All right? So, what was wrong with this picture? What was the first thing that didn't belong? Yeah, the, uh, the, <laughs> the fiber cereal and the crackers. All right, so there was your first one. Boink. Let's put it back. Now where's the evidence? It ain't the wheat thins. Inside, it's not inside the Laffy Taffy. The agent in the Kevlar ate that. All right, ready? Here it comes, ready? Boink. Hiding behind a flake of cereal is a mini SD card the size of a flake of cereal. This one holds a gig. Smaller than a flake of cereal. Wanna do it again? Still in the mood for cereal? Boink. Half the size of a flake of cereal. A micro SD card. Also a gig, right? So like if the investigator sits down in the wrong spot, right? Well, never mind. I won't go there. All right, so what else doesn't belong? 19 year olds, three of them in a house. Oh, somebody said it. Yeah, that doesn't fit at all. A high protein, low fat bar. Doesn't fit at all. It's a little bit out of place. Let's see. Boink! <laughs> it's another one. Holy crap, they're multiplying. Yeah, and uh, what about that gum? Who chews that gum? All right, let's look at the gum a little closer. Holy smokes, what do we have here? Oh. That is a USB 2.0 Sony Microvault, holds a gig. Let's look at the size and perspective. All right? So this is what the good guys are up against, this sort of crap. 
okay? But generally, opening your mind beyond the technology and thinking, what about this scene doesn't fit in? What might be missing? Little bits and pieces of it. It is possible to put some of this stuff together. For example, here's the Johnny Long Memorial Bookshelf. <laughs> Which of these is not like the others? Yeah, who wrote that Google hacking book? Yes, Johnny Longlegs is a little suspicious. Well, let me ask it this way. Which of these books quite obviously holds evidence? Well, how about the only one that comes with a CD? Did the investigator leave the book on the shelf? Did he flip through the book? Open source pen testing, back flap. What's wrong with this picture? It's not the original disc. Yeah. And back to that Johnny Longlegs book. That is the book that just screws up my Amazon searches. Like, I try to tell my mom, you know, I wrote this, you know, these books out here. You just go to Amazon and you type it in. She's like, you wrote Johnny Longlegs? <laughs> like, no, I didn't. No, it's such a nice book. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm, I'm sure it's okay. All right. Where's the evidence? It's quite obvious. Very visible. Highly visible. Not in the box. <laughs> Where else? It's looking at you. It, it's evidence. Art of War is a great book. But no. That belongs in every hacker's bookshelf. How about the audio CDs? Were they left behind? They sure looked like books. They're not. What's wrong with the picture? Let's look closer. Yep, one of those says Memorex. Why is that? It's not original. All right. What about this? Let's look a little closer. Something here doesn't belong. This is a high-tech bookshelf. Thank you, Richard Theme, for that awesome book, Islands in a Clickstream. Good read. Bunch of good books up there. High-tech library. What doesn't belong? That's because they were free. How about this one? Circa 1984. Show of hands, how many people were born in 1984? How many people were not? Holy crap. I have books older than you people. Tucked away in the back of the book that does not belong. There it is, inside the schematics of the Commodore 64. What about this video collection? Doesn't quite add up. No, it's not that there's no porn. <laughs> I thought we established this already. Veggie Tales? What's wrong with Veggie Tales? Oh, there's an Xbox game. That's a good one. There's an Xbox game. What about a Pride and Prejudice? Uh-oh. That means one of two things. There's a female influence, or the guy that owns these videos is get well... I'll be sensitive, but it's a, it's a very good movie, actually. All right. <laughs> What's wrong with this crime scene? What's not in the photo that should be? Exactly. Bunch of gamer geeks. There's a controller and there's no Xbox. But what else? Where's the evidence? CD case. It's GameCube games. What about it? What's wrong with the GameCube game? It's not an original. You guys have the mod chip for the GameCube, right? I can't talk to you about that. It's not an original disc. All right, where's the evidence? What's not right? Yes, that's an Xbox 360 memory stick, and there's no Xbox 360. It's a USB device, all right? We talked about this once before. What else can you tell about this person just by looking at this setup? Yeah, look at that screen, right? Either they're like a compulsive nose picker slash screen toucher, <laughs> which is quite possible. I've seen some of you at your computers, and oh, man. Get in that zone, it goes all up in there. Oh. Yeah, and the padded corners. So they're either insane or they have children, right? So yeah, where's the evidence? What's wrong with this collection of Xbox games? <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. All right, so we open up the Xbox because that's evidence. What about this game? What's wrong with it? The label's off-centered, hello. Turn it over, not original. If it's not original, what's that mean? Could have evidence. You turn on the Xbox, you get screens that look like this. Or like this. Or like that. Could be a problem. Yes, this Xbox is modified. It's got an IP address. It's a client for not only FTP, but also IRC. This is an IRC client machine. Does it have evidence? Oh yeah. All right. So here's the directory listing. You FTP into the Xbox. Here's your drives. Here's uh, you go into one of the directories. Here's what you see. What's wrong here? What doesn't belong? Yeah, this is Nopix. Looks like it's running some sort of Linux. What else? What is very scary? Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, very scary is the fact that there's a Tor directory. Inside of the Tor directory is a file that looks like this. Anybody know what Tor Park is? The disposable browser with the Tor integration hides all your tracks, keeps no history, Windows based. What's different about this particular file? It's an Xbox executable. So you have an Xbox program with a browser with integrated Tor support that is designed to kill all of its logs. What does that say about the user? That they were at DEF CON. <laughs> all right, so simple fact is evidence can hide just about anywhere. Uh, I learned an awful lot when I was doing this book, specifically the fact that being a good guy really sucks sometimes. Um, but I also learned that there's some interesting things that the good guys can do in some cases to sort of step up their forensic investigation and the vast majority of that involves backing away from the technology just a little to go something's not right here let me try to fill in the blanks see what I can figure out okay a couple quick announcements for you guys to tear out of here remember my website gotta click through to amazon.com if you're buying stuff off Amazon you're not doing an associates account somewhere do it here Costs you nothing you help charity all right Got some books and stuff here. Now, one thing, I want to let you guys in on a little secret. Um, I'm a good guy. <laughs> I swear I really am. But uh, I got a little mixed up in some stuff that uh, really shouldn't have gotten involved in. Um, I have a pseudonym. And, uh, well, it seems that, it seems that somebody's, somebody's on to me. Uh, so my past is... Uh, my past is catching up to me, and I, I'm sorry to say that this is probably my last talk as a free man. Um, I've seen the signs, the writing is on the wall. I think I'm probably going to be going down. Uh, so if anybody is interested in helping me out, uh, I would encourage you to come to the next talk, because I might need you. That's all I'm going to say about that one. Okay. Thanks for coming out. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys tomorrow.